This model has a geometry that includes different name selections for the CFD analysis. First, those for the enclosure, the inlet, the outlet, the surroundings, and the ground. Next, the name selections for the components like the tanks, the buildings, and the cooling towers. Each cooling tower has two inlets and one outlet from the fluid domain perspective. The dimensions of the enclosure are based on the length of the building as the characteristic length. Then it has one upstream, two at both sides, and seven downstream. In ANSYS meshing, we create a mesh for CFX using tetrahedral elements. The global controls includes a setup for capturing the curvature and proximity of the components. The local controls consist of the method and the inflation. We need elements close to the surfaces as this model involves capturing the fine details of small scale components and the broader aspects of large scale structures. The inflation in this case includes all the surfaces of the buildings, the tanks, the cooling towers, and also their inlets and outlets to have a good distribution of the elements in the boundary layer. In ANSYS CFX Pre, we define the analysis as a steady state. The domain setup includes the selection of the fluid and the buoyancy conditions such as the gravity vector. By selecting ideal gas, we are using the full buoyancy model used for single phase flows where the density is a function of the temperature or pressure. Then we need to define the reference density. Here, the heat transfer is resolved using the total energy equation with all its terms. And the turbulence model is the K-omega SST. Velocity profile is defined using an expression. This profile is used in both the inlet and outlet boundary conditions. Let's see. This is related to the upstream and downstream lengths of the fluid domain mentioned before prevent backflow. The lateral surfaces are defined as free slip walls and the ground as an unslip wall. The top surface is an opening with the entrainment option for mass and momentum with zero relative pressure. All the inlets of a given cooling tower have the same setup. Here, a cooling tower has two inlets, having a specific mass flow rate at 90 degrees Celsius. Then, the outlet is specified as a mass flow rate with twice that value to ensure the operating conditions. Finally, we specify a high order scheme for this natural convection model and the convergence limit for the residuals. Do not forget to set up the monitors. These are the results after the convergence and mesh independence study. First, the velocity vectors at the inlet and the outlet, showing the profile created in CFX Pre. Next, the streamlines of the flow entering each cooling tower. Here you can see how the adjacent equipment may affect the flow pattern. Now, the flow released from the cooling towers. These path lines show vertical structures downstream, produced by the difference in velocity and temperature, if we compare with the environment whose temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. The path lines also present the temperature distribution. The maximum value is the same from the boundary condition. 90 Celsius degrees at the inlet of each cooling tower. Finally, we have these path lines released from a line 2 meters above the ground. 
Note how the flow increases its temperature and join the main vertical structure seen before. Know the setup for deducing ESC model. It is used in single phase simulations when the change in density over the spectral range of conditions is relatively small. The Vucinesque model uses a constant density fluid model, but applies a local gravitational body force on the fluid that is related to the thermal expansivity and the local temperature difference with reference to a datum called the buoyancy reference temperature. Change to the thermal energy equation without the viscous term, and it's done. Run the model. The results show similar values for the temperature distribution. The maximum value of 90 Celsius degrees is the one that was included in the inlet boundary conditions. However, the maximum velocity for each model is different. That's because of the assumption in the air density. Remember that in the ideal gas model, the density depends on pressure and temperature, and in the Boussinesque model, the density is constant. Let's check the exhaust flow of cooling tower 1 as reference. You see that in both models, the value is the same. But if we calculate the air density of the same location, the ideal gas model shows one value, 0.99, and the Vucinesk model shows the constant value we saw in the setup. Finally, a brief summary. After the mesh independence study, the results show similar temperature contours, but different velocity values in the domain. For the cooling towers, for instance, we got a 20% difference between the two models. More info in the ANSYS help. Log in to know more about the theory and applications. Thank you for watching.